there's a good chance that if you've played or watched Doggy Rampa, you've come across one of these before on YouTube. Doggy Rampa Fan Games. There's too many to count, and there's always one that you didn't even know existed. As you can see in the title of this video, today I want to talk about Doggy Rampa F Shattered Hope. Doggy Rampa F is a unique fan game, and this isn't an analysis of it. This is just my personal opinion on why I think it's cool. Dagarampa F sets itself apart from other games in terms of where it takes place. The, the, the settings of DR1, 2, and 3 are Hope's Peak, an island, and a spaceship in the fictional world. But in Dagarampa F, it takes place in a, a building, probably made by Monokuma, we don't know yet, uh, in the middle of the Arctic. And that's a really unique setting because that's out of the four locations, none of them repeat. And I think that's really interesting because while Dagarampa F takes place in the Arctic, it also is shown in the visual style of the game. In the menus, in the music box, you can see how the Arctic setting kind of affects the visual theme of the game. And I think that's really interesting. So the setting of Dagarampa F is really interesting. But when I watched the character introduction and the prologue, there was another element that I really thought needed to be mentioned, is when I watched the prologue, uh, you can tell in that most Dagarampa games, the, the prologue is used to be the exposition of the game. Usually when you're telling a story, you want to get the audience interested and hooked on getting through to the end of it. So... What I really liked about the prologue of Dagarampa F was that it's it really engaged me in its mysteries, and I needed to know what happened next. Uh, the small things that happened were making me question, is this important for the whole story, or is this not at all relevant? And then what happens to the main character, I'm like, oh god, is, is this going to happen, or is, is he going to get away with it? Or... I had these questions in my head and they suspended me in my like uh my theories and all that i had no idea what was going to happen next so i was just full of like tension and suspense trying to know what happens next and that's why i really like the prologue of Danganronpa f because i felt so engaged in what was happening that i didn't really know what was going to happen uh, and that kind of happens in most Danganronpa games which is why i really liked it because you got you got hooked very easily. The game was already selling me on like this concept of being in the middle of the Arctic, and then these kind of like, well, let's just talk about it. The in the prologue, the sacrifice game is what introduces the characters to the killing game. We don't know that for sure, but the sacrifice game is really uh, where the prologue kind of takes off, where. You know, you either sacrifice yourself or something that you really love. Something, you know, that uh, you, you care about more than yourself, basically. And playing the sacrifice game is where I felt the most suspense and engagement because uh, the characters had to uh, basically choose this or that. And I was like, is Enigma, the character, going to... Uh, go with this option or go with that option. So watching that prologue, I had no idea what was going to happen. But in the end, uh, you know, they did what they did. And we had to go with that. But the uh, the engagement was there. I was so hooked on what was going to happen. Was this going to happen or was that going to happen? I needed to know what happens next. And that's why I really liked it. It was super... Um, super gripping, and I just needed to know. So, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on the Sacrifice game and why, you know, it was already selling me on, like, its setting and, like, the whole concept, but it came out with a, a big old punch, and I was just like, man, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta watch chapter one because, you know, the whole plot, like, this is already really interesting. So, yeah, it was really interesting. You'll notice that in the main series that a lot of characters have a first and a last name, but Dagarampa F kind of changes the formula by giving everyone a code name. You can see it in Chapter 1 or Prologue that their e-handbooks give them a code name of sorts to go by. See, none of the characters remember their actual names, 
So they kind of just have to go off of what Monokuma gives them. This gives uh, the main character Enigma his codename and his ultimate talent. And every other character, like Cancel, gets their ultimate and their memories of being uh, their ultimate talents. So I was kind of not sold on the concept of code names. Uh, I thought, you know, it was interesting when you like see the character reveal trailer, how all, all these characters go by only one name and then that's their introduction. Uh, you know, and you kind of see that and I was, I was like kind of suspicious of it. I was thought, you know, that's not just going to work, you know. Fan games kind of need to be like the main series, where they have, like, Makoto Naegi. They're a two-part system with a first and a last name. But uh, going through the prologue in Chapter 1, I, I thought, you know, Enigma kind of actually works. It, you know, they don't need to remember their full name. They just need something to go by. So these characters like Enigma, Cancel, and Pocket are totally fine and actually gives some personality to the character just like if they had their full name so I, I wasn't first for code names I didn't think the code name concept was something that Daganronpa should do however well yeah but I thought it was actually really interesting because the code names played not a big role but as you know introducing yourself to other uh, uh, uh into the other killing game members it kind of works, and I thought, you know, this actually could be something that is interesting and actually allows us for the plot to kind of develop in a unique form. So, yeah, code names. I, I mentioned this with the code names that Enigma and like the rest of them remember their ultimate talents when the e handbook gives them their code name because no one remembers their actual name or. I think they remember being outside of the killing game, but they don't have any memories of being an ultimate. They get to the facility in the middle of the Arctic, and they are suddenly an ultimate. But once they see it, they're like, oh yeah, I am the ultimate diviner. I am the ultimate survivalist. I am the ultimate voice actor. It just is something that they remember. Now, I'm talking about this ultimate talent stuff because our protagonist, Enigma, does not get one. Uh, he's like Hajime. He's like... A Rantaro when he doesn't remember his ultimate ability. So Enigma just sees nothing on his e-handbook. It tells him that he is the ultimate question mark, question mark, question mark. And that is uh, a, a typical trait in Daganrova fan games, but I thought it was interesting to mention because Enigma is our protagonist, just like Hajime is. And Enigma, you know, goes around and to the others talking about their ultimate talents and introducing himself to them. And uh, Enigma is a really interesting character because he, he kind of has more sass and kind of, you know, uh, wants to avoid characters that are annoying or make too many jokes or even cancel who, you know, would never shut up talking to, you know, and when they're talking, they, they just go on and on and on. So Enigma is an interesting character because he seems like a, character of full of his own self-interest, but also one that, you know, wants to help the group. So I think he's a good protagonist, and um, I really like uh, Enigma as a, as a character. You know, some people, a lot of fan games also try to push for the Kaede's justice, where they try to give the protagonist, uh, well, simply, they just try to have a female, for, female protagonist in their fan game, just so that Kaede kind of has, you know, that kind of a, we are the, the female protagonist. And I, I don't think this is the right way to discuss this, the whole misogynistic kind of way of every dog and rumpet protagonist is male, and yet Enigma is a male in this game. Not the time to talk about it, but I like Enigma as the male protagonist in this game. Not just because he's male, but uh, he's got a lot of, a lot of personal... Um, potential, I'd say. He's got a lot of potential to grow as a character, and also he's really funny and interesting, and that's really what we need for a character in this game, to just be something, someone that is entertaining that everyone can kind of just get behind. So, yeah, that's uh, why I like Enigma, and, you know, going on with these characters in the game, we'll be talking about characters like Cancel, who, um, 
is the ultimate diviner, but she likes to talk a lot, and, you know, it seems like Cancel is one of the level-headed characters who is, like, trying to tell everyone that, like, this doesn't make any sense, or, like, cut that out, you guys are stupid, and she's kind of that kind of character, and I think she kind of swears sometimes, too. So, Cancel is, um, a really popular character, uh, due to the straw poll and all that. The community seems to really like her, and, uh, yeah, it's because Cancel kind of says things that would be, would cause trouble, but, like, she shuts down things that are stupid. You know, if Pocket is trying to be annoying, or even pervy at sometimes, Cancel will be like, Cancel will say what the audience is saying. She'll be like, cut that out, that, you know, stop that. And yeah, she's um, a really interesting character, and, you know, who knows? Cancel is cool. Um, I wanted to talk about Cross, because Cross is the ultimate, ultimate entrepreneur, and... He's got an interesting concept behind him because his ultimate talent is to deal with money, just like uh, Togami's is, but we're not going to try to cross-reference too hard. But Cross, I think, is one of my favorite characters. And I'm just going to go off of my favorite characters here. I'm not going to discuss every character in the game. But Cross is an interesting character because he's the ultimate entrepreneur. He sees the game in his own kind of way where, you know... He wants to avoid it, but also he seems to have a tough attitude. He's a very tough character who kind of plays by his own set of rules, which I think is interesting because that kind of does parallel with Togumi, but only a little bit. And um, he's a cool character. I think he's got potential. We haven't seen the trials in this game yet, but I really think Cross is going to have a bunch of potential to be involved in these trials. Um, talking about some of the pervy characters, uh, Pocket is probably an interesting character because as Enigma has Hajime's talent of question mark, question mark, question mark, Pocket copies Leon. He is the ultimate baseball star. And yes, when you play chapter one of Dagarampa F, it is revealed that Pocket used to be the, he was the former baseball star, so it's possible that Pocket was the ultimate baseball star and then Leon took the title as to connect the universes in a way, but that's speculation. We don't know that. For now, Pocket just is the ultimate baseball star, or used to be. And um, Pocket is an interesting character because he is very jumpy, he's very energetic, very careless and free-spirited. Um, he seems to have a lot of connections to Soda uh, from the second game, but um, in his own kind of way, Pocket is exactly what I said. He um, kind of just, he's really, he's, he's, he gets scared really easily, and he has kind of his own kind of, he's, he's, yeah, he speaks his own kind of mind, and when Enigma goes to talk to Pocket, you know, he uh, freaks out and jumps and all that, and he really just wants to leave. Like, he hates the whole thing about this killing game. He just doesn't like it. And uh, I think Pocket's a very popular character, and um, I think it would be interesting because Pocket, to me, in in the um, ways of the game, I think Pocket has a good chance of being a character throughout all the five chapters, but, you know, that is my speculation. It's possible that he'll die or he'll be one of the killers and then be executed so i don't know it's very interesting to speculate because pocket is a character who immediately jumps to me as being one of my favorite characters but pocket may or may not survive and that is very interesting to me because pocket i think has a lot of potential to grow and be a cool character as someone that everyone can be like he's the comedic relief but also he lived you know, going throughout all the games. So I think Pocket is going to be a really interesting character. Um, to talk about one of my favorite characters during chapter one is Rock. Rock, um, in the prologue, Rock speaks to Enigma about being positive. And I think that scene is really interesting because in the prologue, 
um, Scarlet talks back to Enigma by, you know, trying to dissuade everyone to distrust, you know, everyone. But um, Rock is the one who stays behind and tells Enigma to be more optimistic and, like, work together. And, like, you know, get that weight off your back. It's not that big of a deal. I really like that part about Rock because Rock, to me was a character that uh, I really related to. He um, immediately looked like someone who had potential to be a character. Let me explain what that means. Rock kind of looks like the average Joe, but he, ha he has this kind of depth to him. In chapter one, he's a guy who likes jokes. He likes to make puns. He likes to, you know, you know, try to, to relate to people with making a joke and that kind of thing. But he also seems really nice. As I said, he stays behind to talk to Enigma. When everyone else leaves Enigma to go search the facility, but Rock goes to talk to him. And I think it's a really cute segment, not for any particular means, but it's like, you know, it's a support kind of thing where if Rock were to die, man, that would really suck. So... Um, my personal opinion, I really like Rock, but I don't know where they're going to go with this character because Rock is one of my favorites, and that scene kind of has this weight to it where if, you know, Rock dies, then man, you know, Rock was the one who supported Enigma, and then Rock is the one who, you know, makes a couple of puns, and then, you know, I think th there's a lot of depth to that friendship between Rock and Enigma. However, Enigma does run away from Rock in Chapter 1, so um, that's just one part of the thing. It's speculation. I think it's it's, it's possible. You know, going on forward, um, Doggerompa F is just beginning, which is why I'm making this video. Um, hopefully, if you guys could uh, help me out and, you know, tell the developers about this video and, you know, let them uh, see my ideas here, I think they're doing a great job. I think Doggerampa F is really enjoyable. I really enjoy it. Um, it's It looks really good. They have sold me so well on the concept, and it's really cool. So I think um, there's a lot of things I want to talk about, but for now, that's a, a lot of my personal ideas on it. A couple of the characters are my favorite, and, you know, this and that. So with that being said... Thank you guys so much for watching this, you know, Doggerampa F fan game. Go check out the uh, uh, prologue, chapter one, and the character reveal trailer. Those are all the things that I talked about in this video. So go support them, help them out, hit the like button down below, and uh, subscribe for all the videos that I make. And with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great day. She. <laughs>